So, hi guys, I hope that you had a great weekend and I hope that your week is off to a good start. Thought I would just check in and, you know, see how everybody's doing. I know that soldering can be tough when you start out and I get a lot of comments about, uh, you know, I'm frustrated. Am I doing the right thing? Do I have the right materials? You know, what temperature is a big question I get a lot. It's hard for me to answer a lot of those questions because there are so many variables with the temperature of your soldering iron. You know, some soldering irons are like really, really low temperature and they won't heat up hot enough at all for soldering. Other people have said, um, you know, someone gave me supplies, you know, I have some old flux, it's, you know, could it be that? Could it be my metal? Like, why isn't the solder sticking is another one that I hear, you know, once in a while. I can't tell you that. I think that it's important to get fresh chemicals. You can try, you know, some old things. If you have like old flux and you want to, you know, or old patina and you want to play with around with that. I think it's wise to get new fresh things that aren't contaminated. You don't know if someone used that flux on a project and then took the brush and stuck it back in the bottle, contaminating the whole bottle. So um, that's the first thing. Yeah, you want to make sure that your metal is really clean so that it can accept um, the flux and the solder and patina. What else? Yeah, it's freezing cold here this morning. I don't know. I mean, I got lucky this Monday. Usually there's somewhere I have to be on a Monday and today, you know, I didn't have to be anywhere. So I was glad to be home. It is freezing cold out. It's probably, I don't know, 19, 20 degrees. For me, that's really cold. And we just had a snow squall and I'm hoping that spring is you know, springing <laughs> or has sprung because this cold is just too much for me. Anyway, yeah, getting back to answering some questions. It's easy to get frustrated because soldering is, like I said, there's all these variables. You know, there's different kinds of metal and there's different kinds of wire. And like I said before in one video, buying a silver plated wire from a craft store or a silver colored wire or, or what they call a silver wire, you know, they're all different. Some of them are coated in a plastic and that won't take solder or it will, but it'll, you know, burn plastic and you don't want to do that. And there's different kinds of solder. Someone also asked, you know, what kind of solder do you use? Cause it beads up so nicely. And if you don't know what beading is, that is kind of the nice, uh, high rounded smooth appearance that your solder gets as opposed to being pitted or pointed. I'm sure there are inferior types of solder but as far as the solder I use for my jewelry it's just lead free soft solder. Soft meaning it's a softer uh, lower temperature it melts at a lower temperature. It's a mix of silver with tin and the soft solder that you use for stained glass is a mix of tin and lead and you don't ever use that for jewelry or for any kind of like if you're going to make like a jewelry box or a food container you always want to use lead free solder so as i say that's what we use for jewelry making as far as the different types of lead free solder i often use a generic like from the hardware store um, canfield makes wonderful solders there's different types of lead free there is silver gleam which is a real high quality it's more expensive you know you you get what you pay for you know so if you want like a nice shine that's a good solder to use there's also a pewter finished solder which is more of a matte finish which is also really nice it's its own unique look as for the generic solders like I've tried DGS which I use you know when I'm messing around in my shop a lot or experimenting or even making projects I think that the bead of the solder is really less about the solder and more about the temperature of your iron and also, like I said earlier, the quality of your flux. So whether you're using a, a paste flux or a gel flux or a liquid flux, you know, you want a new flux. Don't use something that's really old. Some might work better for some people than others. The same with patina. Traditionally, the patina that I use for my um, jewelry and my, you know, lead-free solder is for stained glass and some lead free solders don't accept that patina as well but you know you can get around that by listening to you know the little tips i give about how to you know properly apply patina but i feel like i'm rambling right now so don't get frustrated um i always list as but as much as i hope to remember <laughs> the materials that i use in a project uh products that i recommend i'm not sponsored by any company or any you know manufacturer as of right now so I just always recommend things that I like and that I use 
I want you to be successful. Uh, know that soldering is a technical skill that takes time to master or to, you know, get really good at. And, you know, you can't get frustrated. You have to have that stick to itiveness. Like you really need to practice. And you also have to have the, you have to have the kind of personality or the kind of like stick to itiveness mind of uh, someone who has a lot of patience and isn't, um, doesn't get so frustrated that you just want to quit. You have to understand that, like I said, with the different variables, like the different types of soldering irons, like we all don't have the same one. And there's plenty of different soldering irons. There's some that are crappy. There's other ones that are, you know, that work really well. And there's, you know, middle of the road. And, you know, there's all different types. But, you know, if you get to know the tool that you have, as long as it can heat to the right temperature, get hot enough, um, you shouldn't have any problem and the same with like soldering iron tips people say oh where can I get like a, I need a little tip so I can do like little details you don't need that I taught myself to solder and do all the tiny little intricate stuff with uh, a big fat quarter inch tip on my soldering iron because I was a stained glass artist for years before I started making jewelry and that's how I learned and I did it by practicing and doing it over and over and over again and you know, it's just that repetitiveness and that, um, you know, that stick to itiveness. You just have to really want it. You know, how much do you want it? How much are you willing to practice? How much time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears are you willing to put in to be able to get great at something? And, you know, and it's not, I don't want to make it sound like, oh, it's like a really, really super hard thing because it really isn't. It does take some time and patience. And that's something like you can't buy you know you can't buy that time you can't buy that patience it's just something that you have to go through you know you have to just put in the the muscle work or, or the um the leg work I guess they call it right so yeah don't give up and keep at it and you know what else do you do besides making jewelry I'd like to know because I know most of you if not all of you are creative and and what I mean by that all of you are like do creative things other than you know, soldering or jewelry making, or maybe you're just starting out in the craft. And I think that's really cool. Another thing I wanted to talk about was I get tired of making jewelry sometimes. And I think anybody does who does, any person who does like the same thing all the time over and over, or, you know, that kind of work, you're going to get tired of it after a while. And um, you need a break. So what I like to do is I like to cleanse my palette so to speak by doing other things I like to dabble with acrylic painting I like to dabble with watercolors I just started a little bit of oil painting which is fun there we are okay so <laughs> there you are um, I was recording and of course my phone rang and I was recording on my phone and it stopped <laughs> and then I reset it and I readjusted my camera and of course uh, I uh, must have turned it off <laughs> so the last like five ten minutes or so I'm completely gone I'm gonna just go over really quick what I was you know saying what I wanted you to know and I was talking about cleansing my artistic palette my creative palette I'm not talking about like your painting palette I'm talking about like your sensitivity to what you're doing and like the whole jewelry making and I love it it's my thing for sure and but I have other things too not using like any kind of art supplies like I'm a pretty good cook and baker and that's a creative thing that I like to do as far as art you know I like to dabble with watercolor with uh, a little bit of oil now and some acrylic as a matter of fact the other day I was having like oh, I was having a bad day something happened in my day that kind of moved me off and uh, I'm like okay but I was like still feeling like really creative like I was just getting in the mood to like actually I was gonna paint something I was going to use acrylics or gouache. Actually, I was going to use acrylics. That's what it was. So I opened up my sketchbook, which is like my mixed media uh, spiral bound. That's what I use like as my sketchbooks. They're my mixed media books. And, you know, they're great. You can use like pencils or, or markers or pens or you can do watercolor paint in them. You can even acrylic paint in them. So that's what I use as, you know, my sketchbook. When people say they do sketchbook tours, you don't ever want to see my sketchbook. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Actually, maybe one day I'll show it to you just so you can kind of get a laugh and and uh, anyway, so I did some angry painting. Yeah, I had my, <laughs> I had my colors out and I even was videotaping it. And I'm like, 
this is like, this is called angry painting. <laughs> I was painting and I was going kind of, you know, fast. I was a little feeling flustered and I was just like, you know, but it felt good. And, you know, it was probably like one of the worst paintings I've ever done in my life. And like I say, I'm not a painter. And for someone who is not a painter to say that they've done like a really, really bad painting, trust me, it was pretty bad. So um, yeah, I ripped that page out and I threw it away, but I should have kept it. You know, I should have kept it because I watched the video back later on that night and I thought, <laughs> This is freaking hysterical. It was actually really funny. So um, yeah, I highly recommend angry painting if you ever get angry. So <laughs> we all do once in a while, right? But I needed to cleanse my palette, my artistic palette. And I thought, okay, I got to set down the wire and the pliers and the beads and all that and the soldering iron. And I've got to go do something else. I love watercolors. I love watercolors. I love gouache. So I opened up my little mixed media sketchbook and I thought, okay, now here we go. I'm going to do something. And I did what I call a watercolor doodle. And I just used, you know, one color and I do like a real quick like a watercolor. And then you can either take a pen or you can take a marker or I used a colored pencil for mine. You kind of do outlines and it actually looks pretty cool when you're done. You don't have to be a really good painter. You can be a total beginner and it's just fun. You don't always have to paint and make art to have a end product that is like this amazing thing. You do it because you enjoy it. You do it because it's soul fulfilling. It, it It's something that's this urge from inside, right? To create and to just make something and express your express <laughs> and to express your emotions and how you're feeling. And yeah, let's see, we did the angry painting, we did the crazy doodles, and I made a video. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you this video and you know, you can, you can laugh if you want, I don't care. I think it's pretty cool. And I just wanna show you like some other things you can do. So, you know, maybe you're like a fabulous painter and then you're gonna look and you're really gonna laugh at me now. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care. That's okay. But if you haven't ever, you know, picked up a brush and, you know, played around with some watercolors, like this is a really good way to start and it's a lot of fun. And it's a really great break from jewelry making, <laughs> which I'm going to go back to in a minute because I have my whole table set up in there for a whole new video, which might actually be a series of more than one. To get that done, I want to get that to you. So, all right. I hope you have a good week. I hope you have a good Monday. I hope you had a better Monday than I did with all my, um, you know, mess ups with my recording this morning. But okay. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time and have a great week. Bye guys. Now let's get started with that painting. I use this plate that I have some dried up paint on. It's a mix of some watercolors and some gouache. And if you don't know what that is, it's uh, basically like opaque watercolor. When it dries, it's heavier, denser, and it's not see-through like you know regular watercolor is. So it's like a poster paint. Anyway, I use a paintbrush and I think it's like a number six or eight. And I am just doodling with the paint. I am like making some scribbles and some flowers. I have some like kind of a round, like a, a rosebud kind of shape. And I have some branches and some little blossoms, like just four little petals, like forget me not. And anyone can do this. I mean, you can see, I mean, I did speed this up. So it's, you know, a lot faster than, that, than when I actually did it live, but I'm not like taking my time with anything really. I'm just kind of like letting that creativity flow. And you don't have to be a great painter or any kind of painter to do this. It's just, like I said, it's like doodling. And once I'm finished, you're gonna see the difference and how cool it looks. But just one color is all you need. Now you can use more than one. I've done this technique using maybe three colors and it's really pretty. And then you can use like a black ink when you ink it and you go around the edges and I don't even stay on the lines. You'll see how I do that. And here I'm almost finished. So I'll start with like the bigger parts and I'll put in like the bigger blossoms and leaves and some branches. And then I go and I fill in. So I want to kind of make like a dense kind of design. So it's not really like loose and all over the place. It's kind of like kind of tight. So you can see I'll be like going over a couple areas and then I grab my pencil. And you can see I'm just going right around the edges. Sometimes I'll go around them twice. And if you leave like white space between the paint and the pencil, like you're not right up against it, that's what makes it look cool. I mean, that is like what it's supposed to all be about. <laughs> and I really like this. I think it's a lot of fun. And if you've never tried it, I think you should do it. And I go over the larger pieces first, all the larger areas, and then I'll add details in the end. Then I'll go and add some more, you know, like veins in the leaves and little 
you know, the centers of the blossoms and that kind of thing. But you can do any kind of painting you want. You don't have to do, you know, florals. I mean, florals works great for this. And what's the first thing you drew and doodled when you were like a little kid? Like a daisy, right? <laughs> Four or five, six little petals and a small flower. And, you know, anyone can do that. It's not hard. When I'm all done with this, if I like it and I think it looks like pretty good, I might even like scan it into my computer and turn it into a, like a repeating pattern and make it something in my shop. I have a Society6 shop where I have some prints and I have a, like bedding and curtains and I sell towels and you know household stuff and kitchen wear stuff and you can put your own artwork on that and I'll talk about that in another video. But yes, here we go, I'm almost finished. And you see how that transformed the pencil, the colored pencil. Now I used a blue pencil, so it's going to be a totally different look if you use like a black pen or a black pencil, but using that same color, keeping it all the same tone, it's perfect. I love it. And it was a nice little way to cleanse my palette and to take a break and to do something different. And I hope that you're inspired to try it too. And I'd like to know like, what kind of things like this do you do? So, you know, leave a comment. Let me know, like what other types of art and crafts and things like that do you dabble in? What is your go-to, like when you get tired of your main thing that you do, like what else do you do? So thanks for joining me. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.